everybody, welcome live. We're here to be chatting with Jared here in just a second. So I'm, I'm very excited. Jared and I met uh, on Clubhouse uh, like a year, year and a half ago. He since then uh, joined the Facebook Ads MBA program. We're going to talk about surfing. We're going to talk about you know his history is creative and, and really just a lot of things he's doing with his ad agency and a lot of fun stuff. So without further ado. Um, I'm going to bring Jared up. You can follow him. Uh, I'm going to let him show you everything that he's got, and we'll dive right in. So, Jared, good to see you, my man. I love the at symbol, by the way. You can go ahead and give him a follow. That would be great. Or his is over there. I, don't, I can't point across it to his side of the screen. But there you go. Uh, Jared, it's great to see you, my man. Uh, please tell the people about yourself and what it is that you've been up to, because I know where you're coming from, and you and I go back for a bit of a ways, so I'm going to stand out of the way and just kind of let you tell the folks who sure. is Sure, sure, sure. Well, um, I, let's start with where I met Charlie. We said Clubhouse, and it was this amazing app during the pandemic that everyone and their mom was on, and it was very entertaining and fun, and it was a great way to actually get clients and leads. Um, so because we are both very verbose people, um, we did pretty well on the platform. So anyway, that's where we met. Um, that's where it comes from. I um, I have a, a marketing agency called So Digital. Um, I mainly run uh, Facebook and Instagram ads. That is my my malheur, as you would say in French, and um, and uh, or bailiwick, another way to say it. Um, and so uh, I, you know, do my research and I'm a big deep diver into it. I started this in 2016 um, as a graphic designer and I went to school as a graphic designer, have a master or a bachelor's in that and um, a bachelor's in art in design. And, uh, and then I took that and kind of was always owned by the marketing department. OK, so the owned by the marketing department designers, you start to learn what the marketers want and what marketing is about, because the more, you know, the less you have to make changes and the more changes you make, the more work you do. So there you go. So the more I learned marketing, the more I learned about this and that. And then it went on to um, me informing my company about this awesome thing. I was doing their social media um, uh, organically and their design at the same time. I was like, hey, there's this Gary V guy saying dark posts. And so then they paid me to start putting up dark posts. This was 2016, mind you, before Old it was school. Facebook ads. Okay. So Old school, and, man. Dark uh, post Gary Vaynerchuk. I love it. Yep. Yep. So that was where it all started. That was where it all started for me. And and now I have uh, five or six clients shuffling in rotation. Um, and I have um, actually quite a thriving um, a little business for myself over here as a solopreneur. I'm actually hopefully going to probably adding on people soon. And <clears throat> the best way to do that, I know, is to do it with people that I know do exactly the same process as I do. And this process is simply defined, but definitely intricate. And so it needs to be learned and known and, um, and this is Charlie's process. And a lot of this process I had been using incrementally before, but not in the wide scope or the full methodology scientifically of how Charlie puts it together and how it's done. And so this has really helped me with, um, you know, in the middle of it, it was a hard transition for my clients. It's like, what is this scrum doc? What are we doing? And but people don't know what the scrum document is. It's a, it's a document that Charlie has provided all of his students that um, really helps us see the full overview and the microscopic view of Facebook and Instagram advertising in what matters and not yeah, in like the data that matters with trend analysis, you know, how to take uh, a, uh, an audit of an ad account and really understand the value of what you're doing. That's, that's what it's all about. So in the middle of this, so I am learning and introducing this process to my clients at the same point in time. And the further I get into the course, the more excited my clients get because the more documentation they're seeing, the less questions they're asking me because everything's there in front of them and it's fully transparent. And 
probably my favorite thing is this community that we have. It's, it's, it's insane. And we are just, um, I don't know. I, I think I called Charlie. Um, what, what I say, this is the way I called you the, uh, what, what's the, what's the show? Um, the Mandalorian. Yes. The Mandalorian. So yes, you're right. It's, it's, it's true though, because this this is the way. Like we'll discuss, and then I'll just throw in this is the way, and everybody laughs because. And I, and I love too. Like we have the community inside the Facebook Ads MBA program, but you and Tom and Calvin and Vinny have made this whole little like side club of a side <laughs> chat of just the other people that are like your own little group of stuff, your own little yep. like Tuesday crew. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it, we're pretty hardcore and whatever. It's kind of funny because we will put up the raw stuff in there and then it sifts to the Slack. And then if it goes from your Slack and then it goes from the Slack, if it doesn't get really answered by the, the small amount of people in your Slack, then it goes to the Facebook MBA group chat. And then, so there's, there's, and you'll see the, the verbiage change once it gets to the next stage a little bit. So it's, it's a really amazing community of people that I've found that really support me. And not only that, but your wins, but your losses, right? Like we just, Tarly and I just had talks about like, you know, like when you have a loss or a win, either way, you get to celebrate with people or have people like help you be like, look, I have a client for you. Don't worry about it. I, they weren't good, good for me. Um, so yeah, I mean, and so for me, it, it's really about pushing and um, I'm really invested in my client success. And I think that's something that I really, um, I didn't learn from Charlie, but Charlie has that same enthusiasm towards his students, right? And so yeah. that's what really drove me towards you is because you're always amount of caring. Even when I wasn't a paying student, I could tweet you yeah. or DM you and you would answer me back with care Absolutely. and thoughtfulness. Not always the most long, fully descriptive thing, but it was, sure. it was- Half the time I'm answering questions by giving you a question to teach you how to think about something because right, right. the answer or, or is going to be different for everybody. Right, right, exactly. So, so there, and so therefore, you know, moving forward with my clients was kind of introducing them to Charlie and like, hey, here's the, here's the YouTube of the guy that I'm starting to follow now. And, and then also here are the new implementations of, of how we should really be looking at your business. Like not from a media buyer agency point of view, more from honestly a, a CMO point of view of like, yeah, hey, because why not be the CMO of the business if you're running the acquisition media, especially because everybody else is gonna be so selfish and myopic. You could actually give a damn about the end result for the business and all of a sudden, you care more than 90% of the people that work there and you become un ir irreplaceable, especially as you're learning out all this documentation and you're asking people like when your motivation isn't how can I scale by spending more, but how can I deliver you a better business result so that you can be happier with the outcomes? Like you immediately differentiate yourself from 85% of the experts and agencies and gurus because you're no longer selfish. You're like actually giving, you actually care about the end result for the business. And I think that that is so tremendous in the relationship that, that you should have with clients. And one of the big things that I think separates you and a lot of the other folks that have been through the MBA program from the other folks that I see talking around, like their biggest objective is how can I get this account to scale? How can I get it to spend more? And, and like that has that's a ramification of doing good work. That isn't the, especially when an agency is charging a commission on an ad spend. Like now I don't give a damn about anything that you have to say. Well, I think you brought up something that I never realized until even we started talking on Clubhouse is like, you, you would say, well, that's great that you scaled the money, but what about the times you failed? And, and did you scale your efficiency? And I go, Wait, what? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Why does that make so much sense, but no one s has said it? Have you well, scaled it, it hurts your bottom line okay. as an agency to not be spending more money, right? Like, why would an agency but, but, want you to tell you if, if their business model is based on the commission of ad spend, 
Why would they ever tell you the right solution is to get better at the work so you spend less? Like, they don't care about your bottom line. That has nothing to do with their definition of success. You're not well, aligned. They're, they're, a fuck, they're, 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 they're a succubus on your business. Right? Well, that's why I align with you so much is because that is the basic theory of I'm invested in your success. Because mm -hmm. in your success, I succeed. Yeah. And, yeah. and without that realization, um, you're, you're at a loss. You're at that chasing your tail mm -hmm. mode, right? And, and so it was just that. That's when it really clicked with me of like, not okay, not only are you you're very bright in what you do and your processes, um, but um, uh, obsessed, I think, would be a great word for it. But um, <laughs> no, it's, it's a, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, 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 it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But but no, but that 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 crosses over to who your students are and who you get as students because they're the people who are passionate about their clients, right? And when we speak, even this morning, how many of the questions after you did your lecture uh, for the Facebook MBA program were about these people's clients and how much they cared, not just about the success of their, but how much they cared about their clients. Like the underlying is like, yes, I want them to succeed, but it's all comes back to the, I'm invested in your success thought thought process and theory right and so yeah and, and so yeah the more i dragged my clients along with this and the more implementations of, of of oh this is our new document that this is where i show you what i'm doing for the next 90 days or what your nomenclature is so that you can go in and see exactly the secretary can go in and say oh i know this is the winning ad ads and this is the one that's supposed to be getting the most money I can go on vacation and let the secretary, if she knows my documentation well enough to be like, oh, okay, well, this is what it does. And so that's, that's, I mean, gosh, what, where can you get that type of thing to where I could literally teach my brother who's a facilities manager to do what I do in, you know, read in minimally in less than a day. Right. Yeah, so 95% I mean, of the work any media buyer should be doing on the Facebook ads platform can be done by somebody with two, three days training. Like, the, it's not a hard job. Like, if set up properly, if set, if up, set up properly. properly yeah. <laughs> because ultimately, <laughs> when you set up the system and structure and process to work, all you're doing is managing the day to day. You know, I, I, I was on a call with somebody who just joined the at, at Facebook Ads MBA program. Uh, and, um, Travia, I don't know if you had a chance to meet her yet, but mm -hmm. we were talking about it and it was a 16 year old can manage and run a McDonald's that's a million dollar location because McDonald's system and process is so good. It's almost impossible for that kid that literally doesn't care yeah. to do a phenomenally good job. And for, for what it's worth, I mean, media buying as a skill that requires high level of expertise is effectively dead in the world of Facebook. Like yeah. your real job is setting up the factory to do the work, right? Like your real job is being a good manager. Your real job is aligning your testing and business objectives with your client's needs. You know what I mean? Like that's the real work and 85, 90% of what you need to do in a week, like, realistically that two hours three hours max of real work you're going to be doing any week on an ad account yeah not like 15 minutes of that is actually like hard work that requires thinking and realistically if you can get all of that stuff done by somebody else that is you know if the two and a half hours out of the three hours is just done by somebody that you know is very low level that you can train up to understand things then that gives you two, two and a half, three hours to do critical thinking to solve the problem better. And meanwhile, out here, we got folks that insist on hours a day of work. That like, it pains me to think, to understand, to really know that like legitimately, there are people that today are heavily focused on figuring out which ad set to raise or reduce their budget on. Oh my God. Those days are so gone. I love that. Right. I'm so, I, you know how much more I surf? You, you're ridiculous, bro. 
you've no you have no clue okay in the beginning of the course not so much because you're overwhelmed with charlie and trying to figure it all out right but then like three months in and then, then kelvin sifts through me and then tom settles me down and then Vinny talks me through it a second time I'm like, oh okay all right i get this and then and then i start to talk to them and all of a sudden i'm they're listening to me and i'm like do I know what the fuck I'm talking about? I'm like, wait a minute here. <laughs> so, um, you you know, it really like it says surfing in the title, but that is true. That's exactly why he put it in there. And it was for me is because, look, that's what I did this for. This is what I took this course for. So I can, I live, I live three blocks from the beach in Carlsbad in San Diego. Yeah. I'm a huge surfer. Most of my clients in the beginning when I was a designer were all surf clients. And so that's my life. That's my lifestyle. It's what I do. It's what I want to do. This is what I want to do with my free time. So since that, after all the course and everything's done and I've consumed 40,000 hours of Charlie, um, I do have way more confidence. And I do. I just I download my all of my clients info to my Excel doc. I upload them all in the scrum doc. And the, the biggest 30 minutes to 40 minutes in a day is okay, off of these numbers, off of this week, what are my next moves? And then documenting those next moves and then implement them. And then there's an there's that hour. So then there, then move on to the next. So there's, there's my entire day or week. Right. And I can choose yeah. to do that. You don't have to do that every day. I no. Yeah. And, no, and three I love to seven days is what yeah. I tell my clients. Like, you'll get the new, you'll get all the new info three to seven days. And then I always have the caveat. They all know me whether the surf good is good or not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. Like you're at the spot where like, yes, the work's gonna get done. Um, yes, I'm gonna outperform 80, 90 percent of the folks out there. Yeah. But if the surf report is really good, I'm gonna do it after lunch. Peace. And they know it, and I've told you, like, even in our Slack, I've sent you surf reports good. I told all my clients to piss off today. I'm not coming to the Slack. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was yeah, a hard and decision. None of your clients are unhappy with that because you're massively over delivery. And and that's kind of they they love that that's like my passion too. So that's like it's not something stupid. So <laughs> no, I, I, I love that. I love that because like that's really what it's all about, right? Like not only are you having the utmost confidence in what you're doing, not only do you have a system and process that's easily repeatable by entry-level individuals not only can you train folks in a simple amount of time to do the lion's share of the day-to-day -day work but you've also gained tremendous independence and you got this freedom for your lifestyle that allows you to be like no waves are up it looks good peace i'll be back in a few hours because like like i love that we've been on calls where you brought your phone to the beach and literally oh, just yeah. your phone going and I'm just like, well, I, I don't even, oh, oh, there, he's in a wetsuit. Cool. Um, I guess Jared's gone for a minute. Awesome. And we'll be on like group calls and, and it's like, it's cool. Like you're still getting stuff, right? And, and, and you come back and watch the recordings and stuff, but yeah. it's great. Like you're getting to live that life and, you know, yeah. whether it, it, it's, it's Tom traveling or, you know, I, I was, you know, it, I was, you know, if I'm traveling, like the fact that, you can live the lifestyle that you want and you're not tied to the laptop. And as a result, you are producing a confident outcome for the clients as well as providing for your bottom line and then some in a way that is, I'm imagining, probably way less stressful and more lucrative than the day jobs you had before. Like, yes. I mean, that's what Look. it's really all about. I honestly, with my old guru, like I started like, I just said, screw this. I don't want to be a designer anymore because the most I can make, honestly, I, I loved what I did, but the I was maxed out. The most I can make in a year was 65,000 bucks and I could become a creative director and maybe make 70, right? And I'm just like, and I did both of those and it was just like, but that's a lot of work and a lot of stress, you know, right. and, and it's not the 40 hours. It's not, it's not, that's not 40 hours is what they're asking for. So, so by the time I'm done, I just invested in me, ate dirt as Gary V would say for like two and a half years, did all these side jobs, did all this shit I just hated, including Uber and Lyft. 
Oh, yeah. And to this day, to this day, Charlie, listen to this. You'll love this story. This is the success story that you'll like. Out of the pandemic, I went from having three, two, two main clients in the pandemic and then shifting through clients enough to where I'd have to drive a little bit and have two clients, right? And so that was me sifting. And then after the pandemic, you getting more confidence and then the economy changing into an e-com economy, bottom line, right? It, that just, it just, you're either dead in the water after that, or you moved into an e-com economy and figured it out. Right. And that was the bottom line. And so that really leveraged me to where I had a lot of clients, a lot of people who knew what I started to do two and a half years ago. This gets to the success story, I promise. Um, started calling me. <clears throat> okay. So then, you know, now in any day that I feel shitty or feel like I'm not doing my job or I just, you know, you know, you know how it feels when you're a solopreneur, dude, just, there's just sure. days where you're just like, I, I just, I'm faking yeah, like, it until I make up. it. I can't do this. Yeah, I'm like, not good at this. Fair, for anybody listening, if you're an entrepreneur and you haven't yet faced that, like, I'm going to give up thing, work harder. Like, like, yeah. like that is part of it. And I honestly think, I don't know anybody that is regularly making $10,000 a week on their way to quarter million, half a million, a million dollar a year, more thing where that fear FOMO. hasn't crept in to the point of just like, should I give up? It's like a marathon runner at like, they haven't gotten their second win yet. Their legs are tired. They're like nine miles in and they can bail. But like, like you're, you're like, you like, that's just part of the, that's just part of the journey. Right. And to be fair, I think that's where a lot of people stop progressing because they get comfortable there. Mm. And there's a lot of folks out there that basically figured out how to get to that place around 2018, 2019, 2020, and they're riding it out. And I get it, but there's a difference between the solopreneur that's going to become completely financially independent and really create meaningful change, creating jobs, creating opportunity, and bringing joy to people's life. And the person that, at best, is working really hard to be an to do somebody else's job for a piece of their paycheck. And yeah. there's a big difference. And no harm, like that might not be your motivation. Totally fine. Like, like maybe you just want your bills paid so that you can go off and surf all day. But you're going off and surfing all day and doing way better than just getting your bills paid. And you're less exactly. stressed out about work than they are. That's right. And I can honestly, because I've built this lifestyle, because I've built the lifestyle that I want, and, and the success story around that is the days that I feel like that and I feel like I'm a failure and that, you know, that campaign didn't work or, you know, I lost a client or something to that effect, right? I go down to my car. I keep those damn little fucking placards underneath my dashboard and I go and look at them and I go and pick that effer up and I go, I could be doing this right now. I go back, I put that under my dash and I go upstairs and I work my little ass off. I'll go do whatever it's necessary. Right. Because that's that motivation that I have of like, look, I'm living this amazing lifestyle right now to where I, you know, I, yeah, good. It's awesome. If you're driving your Ferrari to, to work, but guess what? I'm driving, I'm riding my e-bike to the beach. Sure. Yeah. On my time. You you On might have time. a Ferrari, but you're you're answering to somebody that, you know, and ultimately I pick my clients. And so if there is a if there is an ultimate issue, it's onus is on me. I picked that client. I took it. I I need to own it. As my grandfather says, you jumped in it you get yourself out of it. That's just the bottom line of it. Right. And that's, but it, it is, it's a lot. I mean, it takes a lot of self-motivation, a lot of, of energy, a lot of time, a lot of sweat, and you got to be able to really, really want it. And you got to eat that dirt, man, that you got to eat those ramen noodles for freaking two years. If you really want to do it, because I am living two blocks away from the beach, the surf lifestyle that I've always really wanted to live and work on my time, walk my dog when I want to walk my dog and making the most money I've ever made in my entire life. Yeah. And, so, and you're, you're just starting out on what this can really mean for you. Like you're not even at the part. point where <laughs> you're still, 
undercharging and over delivering. I know you're still not even at the spot yet where like, like you've got three, four more steps to go before you even reach the potential of what you deserve today. Thank you. And I mean, I'm just saying that is like, that's, that's the journey, right? That's no, what yeah. we're all at, right? To understand yeah. where we're coming from. But the fact is like, you used to be somebody that got paid to work Photoshop. And Illustrator now, too, come on, I'm pretty good at Illustrator. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> Adobe, you're an Adobe wizard. You are an Adobe wizard <laughs> making true. about the same as a manager of a Target, working twice as hard. Yep. With no ability to manage your own life. And what did my fraternity brother say to you when when he when when you first onboarded him about me? Oh, Robert? What did you say? Yeah, Robert. Oh, I I think I said something like, Oh yeah, he's a creative that like learned how to run ads and now he's like run away with it. Something along those lines. Yeah. And, and well, he was he like, Yeah, and as... I love yeah. what's that? Because he that's what he knew me as. He didn't yeah. know when we spoke, he's like, dude what where did you switch because three three years ago when we spoke as fraternity brothers i was still doing the, you know the graphic design i wouldn't say what i was really trying to work, grind at three or four years ago and then and then all of a sudden i'm just marketing his face off because he's had a marketing agency for a long time now for a good 10 15 years yeah and, he's just and like, i love the fact that you were yeah a graphic designer that in a space of a year year and a half from Really being graphic designer first of the side hustle to effectively running your own agency and kind of lapping him. And then he and his team came on board too. And now you guys are peers in this spot where he's put a decade in. You joined the NBA program, caught up and passed him. Now he's trying to catch you. And well, I don't know if he's doing something different than me because he's got sure. his own full marketing agency for a long time now and he's built it up right he went from solopreneur and doing um what were those those just the, the flag the banner ads whatever you yeah, call that flag like, native banner and, yeah. and program and that was yeah, what, yeah. And he was killing it back in the day i mean he was doing great you know and then and then he grew and then as growth comes comes regression right and then mm -hmm. and then he just wasn't he's just didn't know facebook that well and he's like we yeah. offer it but it's not my it's not our like Bread and yeah, butter. it's not the we core don't competency. It. Yeah, it's not, the, exactly. it's not the basis of his expertise. And so when speaking to him, he's just, I didn't even realize. And this is, you know, the more I speak to people, the more that really know what they're talking about. They're like, fuck, where did, where did you come from, bro? <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, a year and a half ago when you and I met, we were talking about stuff. And it was interesting to see like in the clubhouse rooms with, with Fitz and with who does. And uh, like, I don't even, I haven't even talked to those people in so long, but like, I forgot. I remember who does, because this is like, is who does your marketing, but everybody's called them who does. Yep. Uh, and, and, and like to see, like you were coming from the establishment style of doing stuff. Kind of. Yeah. And now your casual conversations around things being light years ahead of what 90% of people still think is a good idea. And it was a bad idea three years ago. <laughs> and, and like, like that's just so awesome because you're insulated now. Like you're, you're, you're good. And I mean, that makes me happy to know that like, Oh, thank you. Friends are, are making things happen. You know what I mean? And like, I think that's, that's, that's just such an incredible thing. And like, with that being said, like, what is it that you're doing now with, with your agency? Like, I want to make sure that people can also understand, like, what it is that you're doing and, and what that looks like for you these days? And, you know, I mean, you're one of a, of a handful of folks that I've talked to, and we're, we're getting more and more people to come on board that have gone through the program. But, you know, some folks are just out there and wanting to get services and get help and get support and, really hire help because they don't want to do it and all of that stuff. And as somebody that a few years ago was basically just working Adobe to the point where now you're living this entire lifestyle, I want to also stress the fact that that doesn't mean that you're not also massively over delivering at the oh, ask, no. especially against market. Right. And, yeah. and, and what it is, what it is, what is it that you think that you're doing? What is it? What is your unique pace? What are you doing better than the average bear? And what are you most excited about these days? And what does that success look like, uh, you know, in, in, in Jared's world? 
That's a really great question. Um, I have to kind of assess that and sit back and think about that. And, and I, I, so keep me on my train of thought because you know the ADHD. So just, just sure. bring me yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay, sure. so. We've got two ADHDs talking to each other right now. So all that. of y'all, good luck. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, so what my processes are now is that I'm really able to go in and make an assessment of someone's account and, and really understand the workings of another builder. Okay. So if we, we we're, if I was in construction, I could go in and look, oh, do a house walk around a, a Facebook look about and go, Oh, I see what they were doing. I see why they were doing it. I see where they failed. I saw their successes. Right. And to be able to identify those things on a level to which I don't even have to go into their actual account. I can go in and Charlie can say this too. I can go into their Facebook transparency and just look at the ads they're running right now. How many ads they're running, what the ads are doing. Are they running dynamic creatives? How many, how many iterations of them? I can figure out just from that what's going on with their account enough to make cold calls on someone and literally bust them out. And they're like, how do you know all of this? How do you know this information about my account? How do you know that we're doing it wrong? And why? To enough yeah. to where I create curiosity to where they want to know what the deal is. What what information are you using? What 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 software is this? I'm like, this is and even mine more mind blowing. It's not a software. <laughs> you know, it's it's just the knowledge of that you're using the Facebook platform, as Charlie said, for probably longer than I've known him since 2018. The Google way. Yeah. And I can, you can identify. All of us can identify it like that. Like mm -hmm. I had a, a conversation with Kelvin of like, hey, when you're talking to clients, what do you do? And that's one of the, and that's, I'm on topic again, right? Okay, good. <laughs> but this is, that's one of the things that I do is that I will go in and I will give them not only just an audit, but a, an overview audit of like, hey, you're running 120 ads. How much ad spend do you have? Well, we're running, let's make up a number. We're running 10 grand through that account. There is no way you're able to fund all 120 of those ads with $10,000. Impossible. Just, impossible, <laughs> exactly. Uh, you can't be doing are... 20 ads, much less 120. See how enthusiastic he gets, exactly. Oh, I, yeah. It's his trigger, it's his trigger. trust me, I know. <laughs> yeah. And what I love about that too is so many folks that come to talk to folks like you and me and other people, they're trying to figure out, they got like 15 plates spinning. Like, what am I doing wrong? And it's like, you can immediately identify, well, these are 13 places you're wasting all your time and money. Right. Pick like, two winners. Go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so even just from, you know, talking to CMO, the confidence that I have to sit down with an NDA client that only wants to speak to me if I sign an NDA and then wants me to talk to their CMO, a graphic, the little graphic designer in me is like, yeah, okay, wow. But then I go and I'll talk to Kelvin and Vinny and I have all the information at my fingertips. It's all there, like, yeah. right? Even in our Slack like sometimes there's stuff and stuff that Calvin's just a genius. He's like your TA. He's amazing. His, his thought process is so insane. It's ridiculous. So I can go in and see some of Calvin's stuff that I have saved. And that's basically off of your lecture, right? So it's a, a derivative. He's the literally, I said this yesterday, he's the walking dummy thesaurus. You know that dummy book, the little yellow dummy book you all yeah, used yeah, to yeah. buy in college? Yeah, he's that guy. He's that. So you know, crib I can notes. just yeah. get crib notes. Thank you. I can just copy paste something in our chat with, with the CMO and their mind is blown just off of, I didn't come up with it, but I know to be able to use it and where and when to use it to mind blow. Right. And I'll just be like, Oh, well let's work out your PSM. Oh, well, what's that? 
I, I, you know, but before yeah. six months ago, I didn't know what it was. Before sure. six months ago, I barely knew what Mer was, you know? So, 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 you know, to be able to speak on a level with people who, who really can assess my abilities within these conversations um, really gives me that, that level up on a lot of other people. And not only that, but then, and then not to go too far with it, but then in that conversation, when they ask about, let's talk about attribution. And then one of my favorite things, Charlie doesn't literally say it this way, but he pretty much does is fuck attribution. Yeah, like, it doesn't wait, mean anything. CMO's little mind blows, you know? Just yeah. wait, wait. I don't care about your attribution. If I am the cog in the wheel that helps that wheel move better and it's greasing it, that's all I care about. And yeah, I have documentation. You're, you're, you're no longer saying, I demand credit. You're saying, I don't care who gets the credit. I just want the business to be more successful. If I can prove that I'm benefit to your business, well, let's just go make some money. Who cares That's about right. who gets credit? Like, That's right. I, I don't even want credit. I want to make everybody else on the team better. Because like, if I'm running the acquisition, really my job is just to make everybody else's job easier. Yeah. And if that means that everybody else gets credit and, and you can tell like a month in, oh my God, everything's easier and better. And like, we're spending yeah. less time on phone calls. We're less stressed out. We're making more money. Like, that's what you're paying me for. Who cares what my ROAS is? Right. Nobody that actually understands business gives a damn. And, and if they like, do, they're thinking about the business improperly and then there's already a red flag or a yellow flag. So, yeah. so you know, that these are things, and, and even inside of that, it's like just the community alone, okay? So is, is in fucking valuable. Our Tuesday chats are, we share, we chat. Hey, Tom, what are you doing with this? Hey, how did you do that? Oh, crap. I didn't know that. Let's, I think I can implement that on mine. Or I'm sitting down with Tom and it was our Tuesday Slack chats. Everyone else bailed but me and Tom. He sat down with one of my clients and he's like, hey, well, this is what I'm doing here. And this is what Charlie's suggestion on one -on one-on-ones. One -on -ones. And what do you think about this? And we just throw it around and we look at my account and I'm like, dude, that's brilliant. I love that. And that ability as a solopreneur is so invaluable because I don't have somebody to bounce around right around the office. Well, what do you guys think about this? Well, let's throw this around. Well, what, and then they tether back a different idea. And then that gets the ball rolling. So that group and that community of just high-minded people gives me that ability to move forward with high thought processes and know that I'm making the right move. Even if it's not the right move, it's a well thought out move. Yeah, and, and you, maybe your hit rate is 85, 90% and you fall on your face once or twice, fine. Even and if I it's 75, it. okay, yeah. that's great. It's great. Maybe I'm not like, for you, like, but for me, it's good. <laughs> I mean, hey, look, I, I, I want less than that. I want 30, 40% because when I do hit, I'll pay for everything. Like. It depends on the business, right? Like I, I was in a business once where it was a nine figure SaaS business. We got 5 million uniques a month. Like, you know, we are spending, you know, 50, 60, a hundred grand a day. Sometimes like that was, you know, the business. Right. And, and, and my boss literally said, if I want to test more often than once every two to three months, I wasn't thinking big enough. Like, like flat out, if I didn't make a 20% change in the business, then I was wasting his time. And it was just like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go fail like a ton. I'll, I'll, I'll see you. Yeah, in a I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, cool. I'm a bunch of band aids on. In August <laughs> with a good idea, and he's like, great. And he's paying me like a healthy six figure. I got equity, and he's just like, I don't even care. Don't bother. Me. And it's like that was a great situation. But what I love about what you're talking about here about the community is like this is like a little even we're all talking about a little nugget of a side little group within the overall MBA program community. This is true. Where this everybody's is true. got all of this information. And one of the things I try to tell people all the time about the community is everybody that's in there, like very few people, I would say, honestly, Facebook ads is the thing that they're the best at. Like you come to the table with, Facebook ads being the reason when you joined the MBA program, that was the skill you were trying to level up. Yep. 
And the reason you were able to do that was because you were A plus at three other things. And, and, and so like the fact that there's an entire bigger alumni group of folks from around the world that are A plus at a million different things. And you've all found these like little groups. There's also like a WhatsApp group for like buyers. I think Gulfham's got one for all the buyers in, uh, in, in Europe. And like, there's all these like little niches and like clubs and, and I mean, that's great. And, and cool. the fact that everybody can share, what I love about it more than anything is what you find different from this versus like between the MBA program community and all of these subgroups, it's not about, oh, I got a 5X row as on a thing and you're like kind of holding a little bit back. Nobody's braggadocious, it doesn't matter. No. We're all, we all literally talk about our failures and how to get better and why is this not working? Those are yeah, the- Yeah, and you've got, like, you got dozens of people to be like, oh, this is how I solved it. Or this is how I solved it. Oh yeah, I've got that problem too. And, and so yep. it's an entire community of problem solving and yep. instead of ego. And, and no, like- There is zero ego Yeah, in all of it. And we're all willing to help each other. The first time I got into the NBA, Golfum was the first person. I was like, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong with this pivot table. He goes- Bro, so easy. I'm, I'm so glad I can tell you this. You're not hitting the sum at the top. You're just leaving it and moving forward. And I go, oh, it's that easy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And <clears throat> no one's going to know what I'm talking about except for our program people. But yeah, that's, but, that's fine. Was, but, but everybody's had that Excel. But the fact is, as a graphic designer, trying to build a career around media buying, you joining a Excel. community – and an entrepreneur from England who joined the program with his brother, who's also in the audit group with uh, with, with, with Chris, uh, he's there to basically give you help on your Excel spreadsheet so you can do math easier. That's it. Like, and, and then ultimately what that means is you immediately just lifetime leveled up. Yeah. And it took a 30 second exchange. Two seconds. No problem. And, First day, and that's stuff happens right literally every single day. Like, oh, all the time. And what I, I love too is, going. yeah, what I love too is, you know, I, I respond to every post in the group, right? Yeah. But like, I think it happened like earlier this week or last week. Like by the time I got to it, you had already, you and somebody else and, and already responded to somebody's question. I think it was like Charles or Vinny had asked something. And Charles like, asked a question and I broke it down in three different parts. Yeah, you broke it down and I was like, well, well Jared is right. I, I agree with him. <laughs> Let me know if you have any other questions. And what I love about that is too, like you're creating, we are creating expertise where everybody's better because they're a part of the group. And so way above and beyond the coursework or being able to ask me something, the fact that you've got people who are experts or from around the world in different skill sets and with different experience means that you're getting this level of support that you're not going to get that from some premium slack group you're not going to get that from joining somebody's newsletter you're definitely not going to get that by buying some pre-recorded course by somebody who's never going to respond to your dms on twitter like your conversations in twitter come maybe mildly 25 percent close to it but no but no yeah you know you're absolutely right because because like, look, the first week I, because Vinny and Tom and um, Kelvin had this like, I think a month or two before I even joined. And yeah, then they yeah. invited me. And then somehow I just, I didn't take it over, but I, I seem to be like the one who's every week, like, come on, those are almost my favorites. Just sitting down. Well, you're with a them. driving force in the community now. Uh, you, Thank you. I appreciate that. that's good at Photoshop and Illustrator. Is now a driving force in like the world's best community of elite media buyers. Uh, and it took you what, six months? Yeah, well five months? A year, a year, because really a lot of a lot of the your your um I listened well, very intensely on you on, on on Clubhouse and every I just stalked you for a good minute and then all your YouTube stuff. So I mean I did my levels to where I couldn't get any more YouTube, Charlie. So I had to get into whatever the next part is was. And then that yeah, was I remember that. yeah. And then you then and I got Eric both did that. We're like, you you got what you could, and then like I I've sucked this dry. I, I got dry. it. Like, that got you to the point where you could get yep. to the next level and then that's to the it. next level. Which was and that's amazing. how I worked everything. Even with my one-on-ones, I'm like, hey, I need to 
I want to finish this whole thing, have as all these thousands of questions, have Kelvin answer the questions that I can answer. And then when I can't get that, I want Charlie now because I have large enough clients where it's just worth the investment to have you help me. Right. And it already has paid off two days after you changed my major account that I'm trying to get them to close, close big time on the rest of their entire company. Um, we, I had a sale, the largest sale we had. And I was like, oh, of course, of course. After Charlie course, and I took yeah. two days later, it's like, boom. And then I had my meeting that same day. And he's like, he's like, I'm sucking all of my ad spend from, from shitty Google. And I'm giving you 25% more money. Oh, we have 25% more budget, by the way, for that, for that account. So yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds good. So, Sounds good. So, but that's the whole point is that like, I came in and I kind of took over, not took over, but like came in and was, just ingratiated in and then i gave my like hey this is how i do things visually and so any visual or design or any questions that have in that in that little venue they'll then will be like hey what do you think about my dog's ads and what this thought process and he'll tell me and i'll be like i think it's great and it's valid and you have a great point and you move forward like you know, let's go. And so th that's kind of what I feel like I bring to that side of the community and to my clients is I can create a direct inside of to where it's going to save you a shitload of money, time and energy. Your graphic designer is going to fucking love me. All of them do because I'm a graphic designer. Good, and you speak their language. Yeah. And I give them templates. I'm like, here, just go do it. And I save them so much. They're like, thank you. My job is so much easier because I know exactly what you need. And I give them the size, the templates, and, uh, you know, like, here, use creative by concept and throw them all of these and let you guys figure it out. And then I will be your sifting process. And then the sifting process is then validate each one of your elements, right? And then the validation process is the golden nugget. Let's use golden as and the validation process is the golden nugget of really Charlie's process. It's the crushing a coal into diamonds and then using the little diamonds to make one enormous big diamond that's going to work. And all yeah. using simplification at the same point in time. And, and then there comes inside the idiosyncrasies that you really have to talk to each other about because... You know, I'll go and hit Kelvin up in that group, that side chat, and be like, yo, what do you think about this copy? I'm dyslexic and I'm ADHD, which yeah, lends and Kelvin's to not. Kelvin's been a professional copywriter since the mid 80s. He used to run Digital Marketer, like, and, and he's a student to the program. He's like, who are you? Why not go to that? Or for that matter, you know, Miguel came into the program and then exited his business on apparel. Like, but you've got experts from around the world that are doing all sorts of stuff. And, that's it. Like, so that, it, like, it. That's amazing. If I wanted to do it, if I if I get a new SaaS client, I talk to Vinny. If I get a client that does, I talk. I get a client that does solar and needs what if I need to know what the average AOV of solar or CPA of solar is. I go to. I don't remember his name, but you have a solar dude. Real yeah, estate. Yeah, yeah. Every single one of these pieces is filled. All of these people know, and not only that, but then there's on top of that the information I pass along to my clients is fucking invaluable yeah it's invaluable because i have a client that i'm like hey well this is the this is it's an is a, a lifestyle you know a lifestyle brand you know the lifestyle brand and and then uh kelvin goes oh we'll just use adventure uh, anything adventure sure. adventure awaits adventure you know is coming anything adventure because that's what you're selling and i'm like that's a hundred thousand dollars suggestion from a fucking copywriter. Yeah, I mean that that's that's jobs. That's money on the table. That's that's you know that that's that's a roof over your head, right? That's food for your family, and, and that's one of those things. Like, so there's this old quote that I loved when Picasso, he was at some like he was at some you know some shop, right? He was just sitting down having coffee or something, right? And somebody came up to him and was like, hey, you know, Picasso, can you draw me something? And he gets out a napkin and he draws a little thing. And he's like, yeah, that'll be 50 grand or whatever it is, right? And I remember it took you 30 seconds. Like, it took me 40 years to be able to do that in, in 30 seconds, you know? Like, and that's, that's the beauty of it. And so really what we're hammering at home and we can, you know, move on from is just like the fact that it's not just learning how to run ads well. 
The fact that it's not just learning how to do, I want to mm -hmm. optimize properly. It's not, how do I maintain scale, scale of my ROAS? Like none of that matters anymore. You're now taking that very elementary view of how Facebook ads should work. And instead, in a short period of time, moving to the point of looking at a business in a way that makes a truly fundamental difference in the bottom line of the lives of a lot of people. And you're able to leverage expertise from around the world in a way that, I mean, if you couldn't hire the group that we have to be on staff, it would be, you couldn't possibly do that. And these folks, everybody's here just like, to, to be helpful because they've all been in the same spot. Like as much help as you get out of that conversation, you've all, that, that person that's helping you has also gotten that tenfold from somebody else. Well, and the bottom that's, line is everybody's, you know, 10 X ROI, their investment on the program to begin with. So it's yeah. all house money. No, absolutely. I mean, the next week, Eric or two, a month later, Eric joins and Eric has a bunch of questions. He's like, Jared. And he just felt comfortable with me because two California dudes and he's just calling me. And I, and I felt that obligation because Vinny and Tom and Golfum had it poured into me. So it yeah. was that sense of like, I'm helping someone. And not only that, but then, you know, then a month later, I find out that Eric does something really cool with this other program and he's like oh well let me help you with this let's talk oh, about this thinks, like his whole like process oh my gosh right it's <laughs> exactly it's right. brilliant no exactly his email flow for customer acquisition at agency level like that alone having a conversation yeah. with him on that is what could change somebody's life but that's the whole point of this is, is that when you even when we discussed about this that you know i immediately even not being in the program when you said the sense of community, I always drive something, do derive, derive something from a community. And it's because I put in as much as I put out. And so there is really the point of that, of that is that all of us are just pouring into each other is because we're all leaning on each other and, and we're yeah. all very much solopreneurs. And if you're not, you still feel that obligation to your fellow yeah, your fellow. Yeah, your fellow man and, and friend that has gone through this this thing and you know he's on the same course and path as you are. And so why wouldn't you answer his question? Because you're going to be that next person with that next question. And yeah. not only that, but that then I can pass that along. That information to my clients is worth more than I am charging them, like you said. A hundred yeah, times more than I am charging them. Because and what I love about that too is like, your clients are hiring you to be their Facebook media person. And within a couple of weeks, you are now the resource for 90% of their problems. And it takes you zero effort to solve it because you lean on the expertise of people from around the world. And I mean, that is an irreplaceable, like your unfair advantage in the marketplace versus somebody else that is still focused on cost caps, interest groups, audiences, yeah hacking the system, yeah. insisting that they're doing a good job by launching 30 new ads a week. Like that person is so fundamentally missing the point. Yeah. And, and, and like, that's, that's just, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you're still undercharging and over delivering. I know that's the you next know? point. And we're, we're moving, we're moving my fee rate up. Trust me very I, much. I love so it. Make next. some more money, man. Make some more <laughs> yeah, money. So, I, so. And to be fair, before you do go too far, <laughs> with that let's make sure that people know how to get you while you're still uh afforded while you're still yeah, under charging and over delivering so, so with that being said i, I want to make sure that people can figure out how to find you and how to work with you because they might just be a brand that's like i can't afford to do all this stuff i don't want to do this stuff but i just want to hire this guy because i've got a team of creatives who are pretty good i know i need to do media buying but i'm not that good at it and i need a lot of help with my business model but i don't have the time to do this thing myself you're the perfect person for that situation to come in and be that cog and that, that is immediate money in the bank. Yeah. And I, and I also can speak well with all of the rest of your team members enough to know what their job is, their role is and how I can help, whether it be Google or not. And yeah, you can just go to my website. It's so digital.com. Um, and you can book a calendar, uh, a calendly um, appointment and um, just set it and I'll sit down. 
I say 15 minutes. I, Charlie, how many times have we ever given 15 yeah. minutes, please? Yeah, please. 45 minutes so, call. Yeah, yeah exactly. Call. Later, I'm like, I gotta go. I gotta walk my dog. Just give me a minute. <laughs> I got so. Um, but no, I mean, we just love talking about what we do, and it, we're just so much. There's so much passion between it, and so. Um, and, and yeah, and so you can get a hold of me there. And, and if you need any help, any other directions and areas, my favorite part is I have resources of friends that I'm like, oh, you need an SEO guy. Okay, cool. I got somebody or a few sure. people you can talk to right at that same point in time. And, and that's the other point I think too, is, is that you can, you, you can always use me in different areas, um, but I definitely am a Facebook and, and um, Instagram expert in media buying. That is my yeah. my main main goal. Although you, we are starting to get into TikTok because you know that's part of the course that now you're pushing yourself into it, and so that you're dragging us into it too. I'm not saying dragging. I I, I say that metaphorically. Plain, well, enthusiastically, but people are coming along, and w w to that point too. I mean, I got to get Andy in here on something. But Andy joined, starting a brand from his drop shipping from TikTok at fifty dollars a day was profitable after like two weeks, scaled that, joined an agency, he's now running his own entire TikTok thing, built off the money that he's earning from the Facebook side of thing, completely changing like his entire future. Cause he had like, I got three months to make this work or I gotta go, you know, I, I gotta give up. Drive Uber. He's like, <laughs> I know that. <laughs> back against the wall and I was crushing. Yeah. Oh, no, Steven. That, my bad. Steven was doing that. I don't know why I was going to say it. My bad. Steven. Okay. Steven. Okay. Um, Sorry, no, because... and Steven. <laughs> They'll forgive you, I promise. Uh, probably. Probably. So, well, man, no, we're yeah, coming I mean... up on an hour here. I don't want to make it too long, but, like, no. I would love to ask you two things. First off, I want oh. to say thank you. I really appreciate your time. Oh, um, I'd love to ask you two things. One... For those people that are maybe interested about the MBA program, but not necessarily sure if it's the right fit for them, I would love to know what you would say to those individuals. And the second thing that I would love for, to hear from you is just what has been your favorite part about it and what does the future look like for you moving forward? I think those are the two big parting shots I'd love to hear because I think those in and of themselves – could be the what, most people can get, people what people can get from it, my favorite part of it, and my movement forward, correct? Those yeah. Are three? Yeah. Okay. We'll call it three got things. It. Sure, I can I count. Them. I got it. I got it. I got it. You asked them, so I'm just naming them. I have I to do it. that. I have to I have to name after and make sure that we're on the same page. Otherwise, I lose it. So, um, okay. So, um, the first one is, uh, what was, I just lost it again. Sorry. What was so, the first one? Do you want to name, like, in the NBA? Oh For yeah, why, why? Are, might be no, I got you. A question about like if it's worth yeah. their time, if they yeah. should be doing it, what it looks like. Like yeah, yeah. Can we um, help? What what I got somebody's you. gone through it? What do you have to say? What I have to say is that it's like Charlie's like playing an instrument. Okay, this is this is, it's a I'm gonna, I love analogies. We love analogies. Okay, so or or let's just go instrument because I like this one. Charlie's like playing an instrument as a kid. OK, you need to know that it's going to be the right fit and that this is where you want to go with it. Now, if you're like me, you didn't know if this is exactly the road you wanted to go down and you wanted to learn. Now, I started slow, right? I just started consuming, consuming, consuming YouTube until where I could not move forward. Then I leveled up into I don't remember whatever area the slack or something to that effect, some other area to where it was all his ebooks. And I just poured through all the ebooks and did all the learning. And then you start to really figure out if the MBA program is going to be good for you because everyone learns differently. First of all, I'm, I'm a visual learner, right? And, um, and so I have to consume it differently. And so in order to be able to learn from Charlie, you have to consume a little bit differently from visually because there's a lot of math. And so, um, it, so what I'm saying by the instrument is like, you want to pick it up and you want to make sure that you get lessons and that if you're going to jump right in, I think it's probably not, the smartest idea to jump right in, unless you already know, like Brill, that this is what you want to do. This is your 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 agency's doing this, and you need to be better at it because you're just not on par with everybody else. And then that's just a bar none. If you're already doing it and you think you're doing it incorrectly, and you watch like 
three of his videos and you just be like, well, what the, and I'm not doing that. Then you need to join immediately. Bottom line. Okay. Now, if you're transitioning, then I would do it like I have, and I'm not patting myself on the back. Is it consume, consume, consume and to where you just level up. And now I understand that area to where now I have questions move forward. Now I understand that area. So, I mean, for me, I started consuming Charlie free. Then I got into his, his ebook course. And then I was like, I, I can't drive any more from this. I need to be in the MBA program. And then the MBA program was amazing. But for me, the next question, the sense of community and being able to bounce ideas off around my fellow members is by far the best thing of all time. Like, it's just amazing. And the people, it really is because you curate really amazing people to follow you. Okay. And we all have a similar DNA construct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so because of that, we all really just get along because we all, we're all very enthusiastic and we all know that we have a similar goal. And so that's just amazing. And, and, um, and then uh, the last thing for me is I want to be able to be a not a, not a solopreneur. I want to be able to grow this out to where, you know, ultimately I can get my little brother out of facilities, facility management and run him through your course and be like, Hey, let's, you know, let's pay for the other half for you to get one-on-ones with Charlie so you can get better at this. And, um, I can create an agency with my little brother and, you know, maybe Tom or Vinny or Calvin or something to that effect, you know, and, um, and move forward. Because I think that's where really it, it, it is for me. And then not only that, but moving forward also in not just running Facebook ads. Because your course is not just a Facebook ad course. It's really not. And I really want to make sure this is probably going to be his his quote. But it's an MBA course. It really is. And I've said this since the beginning. Before Calvin quote it, uh, coined it, which is true, he did coin it. But I told you this even when I before I joined that, or right when I joined that this is MBA you're teaching me to be a, a marketer. You're teaching a graphic designer to be a potential CMO, right? And never in my thought, my life, did I think that I could be a potential CMO. And now I could sit down with CMOs in a room and have them look at me with kind of awe and and and, and dis, disunderstanding of of my element of you're just a media buyer, but you're talking about, Hey, let's pull the lever in email and let's see if we can do this more. Let's not retarget. It's not, this is not the platform for this. Let, let's use email. It's free. Wait, I've never heard somebody say that before. Well, then you're, they're, they're doing it wrong. Right. Or, or, Hey, you know, your, your, your ads for Google aren't going to work here in Facebook, you know, let here, here's why. And so, Moving forward, I'd really like to get more into, you know, YouTube and TikTok and, with my agency and do do a little bit more inside of that. I think I'm going to leave the Google stuff for uh, the Google's stuff for all the rest of you and um, and just keep with this, the uh, uh, the platform that I know, uh, the cost per millies and um, and just grind that. So, yeah, that's that's what I'd really like to do. I love it, man. And I really appreciate that. And like if ultimately this one little graphic designer that wanted to surf more can develop a family business to provide for like the generation. Like that's, that's amazing. That's like it. that's, 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 that's why I do it. I mean, the bottom line is like, I know I, my why is to have more conversations with people just like, yeah, I want to get my little brother a better job and we're going to start a family business because I'm sick and tired of under earning and just sitting at Photoshop and illustrator all day long. And I'd rather be surfing. And I 100% should be like, you deserve that. You know what I mean? You don't, you shouldn't be working as hard for less than your worth. And the honest truth is you're probably not charging what you are worth even to this day. And I'll oh, keep counting really. that point home. I know you're right. You're absolutely right. I will charge more. All of my clients are going to get a notice that is going to be well worded from Charlie and Kelvin. Probably not even going to be any of my words at all. Yeah. <laughs> get that nice soft email sent out of, hey, inflation's here and I've been working for you for a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> if this, this extra 500 bucks, this extra thousand bucks a month doesn't matter to you because of what I've done. Yeah. And, and you're 100% worth yeah. that little bit extra. 
Because, like, like, especially if someone's been working for six months or a year, if they just prepaid the next six months on that little bit extra tax on working with you, they're making that back in the first week of that six month period. Then, hey, it's all profit from there. Like, I'll give you a great success story in the relationship. I'll give you a great success story to end here. Um, So, I started with a charity business. And their uh, charity gift cards called Tis Best. I don't have an NDA with them. Go buy charity gift cards from there. Fucking amazing. They're great people. They're the sponsor. Of the, they're the old charity sponsor for the Ellen Show. So that also helped too. But but they came to me from Clubhouse and said, "Hey, we heard you. We'd like to use your your expertise." And um, Facebook ads have never worked for us ever. We've tried two different people. I went in, I looked, and I said, okay, I get, I understand, I see what you're doing. So we went in, and they gave me two months. So we ramped up in two months, and then in October, we launched. Went from, they wanted traffic, like, eh, let's, we know how that works. But, but then we went, as soon as we rolled from traffic to conversion, when I finally convinced them, and they started putting money in it, the first month that they used me, they made $200,000 for their charity. I proved to them in January when they were going to shut it down. I said, give me two months. Give me a little bit of leeway with two months because remember, this is a charity. They yeah. don't make that $200,000. That $200,000 goes right out the money. They have a certain set budget. And if I push that budget, they have to rebudget everything because of that. Okay. So yeah. I have to remember that. So I said, hey, give me two more months. I think I can make you way over and above beyond in your off months. They have never run ads anytime after December. And September is when they would start. I have made them over $20,000 a month. I think this month we're at 70 um, over, over and above what they make every month over month. See. Wow. Like you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds extra, of thousands of dollars extra. For really good causes to make the world a better place because yeah. like, hey, maybe I should value myself a little bit more and invest yeah. in my future. And like what that ended up looking like in your investment is making the world a bit of a better place for these other folks. Like that's amazing. I yeah. love that. So like that's, that's what it's all about. Right. Like so why otherwise you could be maybe a graphic designer or, or a I creative think. director, never get to that point, work five times as hard for half as much money and not as much surfing, not nearly as much. Surfing. <laughs> not at all. Like not at all. No. And, Can and I buy that like, new surfboard I want? No, uh, uh-uh, uh, no. no. Got to buy them on every other year. The surfboards you want. Yeah. You're, you're, you're living your calendar by the surf report and making more money than you ever did before, and, yeah. and making the world a better place while doing it. I mean, that's yeah. that's everything. I love that's that. That's exactly it. So yeah, that's. I mean, that's the end of it. Like that's the end all be all. And now, now um, they're asking me what 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 can we do next, and I'm just like. I don't know. I don't know. Ask Charlie. We'll talk to Charlie. We'll figure out if we can maximize this even further. <laughs> I doubt I it. it. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find it. We'll find something. We'll find something for sure. I know we will. I know we will. So that's well, where man. it is. That's where I stand, man. There's there's the good success story to end. I think we wrapped it up pretty tight. That was nice. I love chatting with you, bro. I love, I love chatting with you too, man. I love it. <laughs> Our energy is always super fun. Uh with that being said, man, I'm gonna I, I, I'll call it there. But hey, look, everybody watching this thing, give the man a follow, ask him some questions on some stuff. I really appreciate your time, man. Uh, I'm gonna go enjoy some life. I know you are too. And with that, like, I'll, I'll see you I guess tomorrow. We're gonna have a tomorrow chat. Tomorrow twice. So, You're gonna see me yeah, twice tomorrow. I'll get to see you then. Um, <laughs> and until literally tomorrow. Yep. Um, I'll talk to you later. All right. You're the man, Charlie. Bye, everybody.